think Mark Holmes, the son of John Holmes, has ever had Stephen Jones on four times on his show? Who in the world is Mark Holmes? Will somebody please tell me? My new way. here, and so before we start this video, I gotta get this mother humping thing out of the way. Mark Holmes is my dad. What's up, good people? Mark Holmes here, of course, with my buddy Cowboy Joe Boo. And as always, I want to say thank you all for watching, commenting, subscribing, and being part of the Joe Boo Sports Report. Without you guys, as well as you ladies, you know that this literally does not work. I hope everybody's having a great day. It's hump day. I hope you're humping, getting over the hump, or doing whatever you do on hump day. Make it a humpty hump day. You know, I'm trying something a little bit different here because usually I pull down the shade here because the, the really cool thing about this red brick house is there's so much natural lighting. You know, I guess when they were building this back in the day, candles were expensive and they wanted to maximize the sunlight as much as possible. But as soon as the sun comes up, boom, until the sun literally sets right outside that window there, it is well lit. And so sometimes the lighting is coming from the side and it's not good but i'm trying it today with uh with the window open just let in a little more light because my wife has a million plants in here every time i turn around it's like i, I don't recognize that plant i don't recognize that plant. did you oh yeah and and i'm seeing empty flower pots over there that i bet will be filled real soon so anyway we are sitting here wow today is the third of july and i am booking my flight for the 4th of august to be flying on that big old jet airliner headed to cali because i'm going back to cali for dallas cowboys training camp the week that they will be practicing against the rams you know it's funny listening to um rome shout out to rome rome was getting a clip from law nation and uh the group and stuff where they had brian brodus and I can't remember exactly how Brian Brodus coined the Cowboys front office. But basically crazy town is what they really are. That they are, you know, that, that, that they are just crazy. And, you know, it's amazing that the Cowboys have won 12 games each of the last three years because it just seems like they throw shit on the wall and say, yeah, that'll work. So their idea, you know, Brian Brodus was saying, yeah, they're maybe crazy enough to think that they believe in Will McClay enough that they can just find and draft their way out of letting guys go like Dak, CD, and Micah. Now, we don't know if somebody is going to get a hold of them and change their mind and so on. I know the Dak Prescott haters out there are worried about me and things saying that I'm really worried about this guy because he is literally crazy about Dak Prescott. Now, what you have to understand is, is this. If I see you about to drive off a cliff, I'm going to tell you, don't drive off a cliff. You may tell me, man, there's no cliff. In front. I'm going to keep saying, look, bro, trust me. There's a cliff there. You go over it. It's not going to be good. It's not going to be. I'm going to try and convince you it's a bad idea. Now, just because I try and convince it with all my heart and all that doesn't mean that you have to listen because a lot of you are ready to drive off a cliff, and that's fine. That's up to you. I'm just going to do what I can to try and see when I see that something is definitely a miss to try and change your mind. But that's me. Now, we're being told or the, the, by, by the talking heads, the Cowboys, they can't pay all three. They can't pay all three, you know. You got, you know, if you can't, you got to let one go, let go, Micah, or let go, Dak, or you know, keep, you know, we're playing all these games. But I have to say, if you know what you're doing, you can figure out a way to make the numbers work. I'm not gonna, no, seriously. I know I have been able to, because I'm not, a, I've never been a wealthy man, and I didn't have good credit there. And I found a way to buy a house without credit and fix it up and be able to juggle the money and make it work if you really want something to work. 
And see, here's the thing that that's kind of crazy, and I should have pulled this up before, but let me, let me get over the cap. Over the cap, Dallas Cowboys, okay? Let's take a look at our situation currently as it sits, okay? And I know this is going to be one of those things that probably will bore most people. But as we look at our cap situation right now, the Cowboys have $12 million in cap space. $12 million, which is enough money for them to do what they're going to do this offseason because they're not going to sign any mega contracts. They'll sign a couple players here and there, you know, veteran minimums, you know, where they're going to end up getting money kicked back where it's like, you know, a million-dollar cap hit. They're good. And even though we know that Dak Prescott's a $55 million hit right now, and we know that DeMarcus Ware is a 20, CeeDee Lamb is currently 17.9. They could go through the season just like this and be okay. Now, come next year, come next year, you still have Micah Parsons on the roster. CeeDee Lamb is no longer there, but you see what I see up here, right? It's $64 million. $64 million of cap space that's left next year. Now, again, that's not counting CD or Dak. It is counting Micah Parsons because he's a $21 million cap hit next year, right? So, without Dak and CD, and you're going to have a lot of free agents, okay? We know that you're going to have to start worrying about guys like um, Tyler Smith and things going forward and getting him as a contract and stuff and so on. And so, you are going to have other people that you're going to have to pay. But you do have a lot of voidable uh, cap hits because you have Demarcus Lawrence's 7.4. You have Zach Martin's 10 if he decides to retire. And you have Brandon Cook's 4. And what you could actually do if you decide to keep any of those guys is you can absorb that money potentially to be also used towards their contract number for the following year. So let's say you sign Zach Martin to a two-year extension on there. Well, you could go ahead and take that $10 million that's under avoidable money and split it up over those two years and so on. And so you could get those players back. But here's where it could be really interesting. Okay, we know Mike is not going to want to play on his um, fifth year option. But let's take, for example, Trevor Lawrence's contract. Okay, Trevor Lawrence is getting fifty five million a year, fifty five million a year, two hundred seventy five million. Hypothetically, let's suppose for the sake of argument that the Cowboys said, let's go ahead and take Trevor Lawrence's deal. And we're going to go ahead and give that to Dak. Right. Now, 2024 is basically his fifth-year option number, which Dak Prescott won't have because he has no more time left on his contract. In which case, you eat the $55 million this year. I'm just saying, just hypothetical. Just, just bear with me for a second here. Hypothetical. You go ahead and take that $55 million hit this year because you're not really going to use it. It doesn't help you much because the die is pretty much cast. And let's say the $40 million that you have – that's part of that voidable contract that's been prorated. You take that $40 million and you prorate that money over four years. So let's say, for the sake of argument, you take the $17 million cap hit right there. Add 10 to it. It's only a $27 million hit for your quarterback. The next year, that same $10 million put to it. It's a $24 million hit. Oh, excuse me, a $34 million hit. And then in 27, it's only a $45 million hit. You follow me? So if the Cowboys got away from next year with a $27, $27 million hit for Dak Prescott, whoa, okay, take that from the 65. That still leaves you $38 million right there. Oh, okay. If they roll over some money over there, you know, you got over $40 million right there. And then you got CD. So let's say, for the sake of argument, you just took Justin Jefferson's contract and said, okay, you know, we, 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 the guesswork is out. We can compare apples to apples. We got Justin Jefferson, CD, both drafted in the same draft. CD was drafted before. Neither of them have had a whole bunch of playoff success. Both of them are top wide receivers, hypothetically. So, 
CD gets his $35 million, which is over the 32 which would get him to stop holding out. And you see what the cap number is for this year? 8.6. So you could actually go through, take C.D. Lamb's contract at 17.9 right now, and save yourself about $9.5 million, which is added to the 12. I know I'm, I'm saying numbers here. I know I'm losing some of you guys. But there you have it right there. That means 9 and 12 is $21 million. Some of that will roll over to the following year, which will give you more cap relief. Right? And then his cap number for next year is 15. So we said we had about 30, or we said we had about 40 million. Okay. So we take the 15 million from the 40. That still leaves us with the 25 before the rollover. Oh. Hmm. Hmm. Okay, so now let's deal with Micah Parsons. Let's say for the sake of argument, the Cowboys wait till next year to do this deal. Or they don't wait. They go ahead and do this now. Right? Right? Let's say that we end up having the first year of that contract for Micah Parsons. You know, you end up signing him to this contract, this the same Justin Jefferson contract, same one. $8.6 million next year. So if I have 40, I'm sorry, 25, 25 after CD and Dak, I think it was, was that 25? And you end up getting Micah at eight. Boom. Now, there's other things that you can do in here. For example, maybe you don't take all of Dak's money, that $40 million, the first year. You could go ahead and say, we'll take five of that. There you go. And put, you know, a couple million, you know, down the road as the cap stuff go up. So this whole idea that you can't pay them. If you ended up getting Micah Parsons next year, making him whole and making him the highest paid edge rusher in his $8.6 million. In fact, you could do this right now and just say, we're going to start right here. You're $8.6 million for this year. You're only adding $3 million on the, on, on the cap. You do um, CD Lamb and you save $9 million. You're still netting $6 million more money that can roll over for next year. You're still sitting with $18 million right now. You literally could sign those two guys and still have, guys, $18 million, which is more money than they've had all offseason. So when you hear the talking heads saying, oh, they can't afford them and all that, if you don't understand how the cap works, because what you have to understand is, look at Justin Jefferson's contract. It averages $35 million a year. True. But you're not getting over $35 million until year three. Trevor Lawrence's deal averages $55 million a year. Right? But take a look at it. 15, 17, 24, 35, 47. It doesn't get anywhere close to $55 million on the cap. Until 2029, in which case, if he's not working out, you can cut him with only a $21 million dead hit. So we're, we're making a whole lot out of something that really isn't there. You can do this. If I can figure out a way to juggle and fix the red brick house without getting a loan from the bank, between using credit cards and, you know, pension here and saving there... They damn sure should be able to figure out how to sign these three guys. I mean, I could sit here and I could tell you how I would go about it. And I'm an idiot. So let's hear what they have to say from the talking heads, because, you know, I always like to hear from them. And speaking of talking heads, you know, it's kind of cool because, you know, Dan is on the West Coast, which means he's three hours behind. I think he wakes up on Wednesday mornings excited about me being on the show because he always texts me, are you on today? Are you on today? Are you on today? It's like, yeah, I'll be there. I'll be there, man. Stop bugging a brother. Good Lord. All right.
NFL. What should Dak Prescott do?